guys, today we're going to be looking into some counting techniques. So basic counting techniques, but it's not about just counting numbers, it's not going to be that easy. Have a look on the board. I've got A is the number of outcomes of the event P, so some random event P, A is the number of outcomes that it has, and B will be the number of outcomes of the event Q. So you're probably wondering what this really is, but just remember guys, the number of outcomes of these two events, if they occur together, it would simply be the number of outcomes for the first possible event and the number of possible outcomes for the second event. So you multiply it together. Now for those who are still confused of what I'm talking about, let's go into the questions and you'll get the idea. So let's start with question one. A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. Find the number of possible outcomes. So this is like what I've talked about P and Q in the previous slide. See how the coin is one event and the die is another event and they're going to be tossed together. So a coin, a coin, how many sizes does a coin have? It has two. And how many sizes does a die have? It has six. So what I'm going to put is a little table here where it shows you the possible um, events, sorry, possible outcomes that a coin has. So it's going to be head and a tail, it's only two. And for a die, it's six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if I throw it together, I could get head one or head two or head three, head four, head five, head six. Or if it was a tail, it would be tail one, tail two, etc., etc. Makes sense, guys? So these are all the possible outcomes I have. So let's quickly count it up. So let's use our counting technique and try it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this becomes 12 possible outcomes altogether. But remember in the previous, um, in the introduction, I told you that if you want to find the number of possible outcomes altogether, then you just have to multiply the possible number of outcomes for the first one and the possible number of outcomes for the second event. The coin is two events, so two outcomes, sorry, head and the tail, and the die is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just multiply it together and you get 12, which is exactly the same as what we counted up it as. So it's, it will be a good idea if you can draw up a table like this. I'll just keep drawing this up for you just so you can see how many there are. But in the question, you don't necessarily have to draw that up. You can just use your basic counting technique. So let's try question two. A mathematics test has two multiple choice questions, each with four answers, A, B, C, and D. Find how many different ways in answering them. So there's four questions and, sorry, there's two questions, so two multiple choice questions, and they have four possible choices. So if I let this be question one and question two, the possible answers for question one is A, B, C, and D. And this applies for both question two, A, B, C, and D. So I could get question, I could get A and then A for question one and question two. And I could get B in question one, A in question two, C in question one and A in question two, and D in question one and A in question two. It depends on what you choose on either one. So, or it could be B, A, B, 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 C, B, D, C, A, blah, 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 or D. It really depends. So these are the, all the possible outcomes I've listed out on my table. So each one has four. So four, eight, 12, 16. So this has 16 ways altogether, don't they? Now, instead of doing all that counting and drawing up that massive table, what you could have actually done is use, use our basic counting technique. So how many outcomes for the first event? So question one, we'll call that the event. So how many outcomes do we have? We have four. And how many outcomes do we have for the second event? Question two, again four. So all you need to do is do four times four and you get 16, which is the same as how we counted it up. So utilize this method. It's very, very handy and easy to do. Okay, question three. Amy, Ben, Chris, and Dave are required to stand in a row. Find the number of possible ways. So, Amy, Ben, Chris, and Dave. I'll call Amy A, Ben B, Chris C, and Dave D. That will be pretty easy, isn't it? And then let's try to list out the number of ways we can have. They're in a row, so they can be arranged in different ways, right? So the possible outcomes, I can list them out. It's going to be Amy, Ben, Chris, and Dave, or we can kind of adjust it. We can have Ben, Chris, Dave, and Amy, or we can have Chris, Ben, Amy, and Dave, and the list goes on. Amy, Chris, Dave, Amy, no, that should be Ben, isn't it? So we can't have two Amy's. But anyway, 
well, you get the point. And then it goes on. You can have so many different outcomes, right? So, yeah, I made a little mistake there. But if you list them out, like I did there, you could make a little mistake, or you might miss one, you might, or you might not have one, or you might put two of the same kind. It's very, very risky. And there's so many different outcomes, it's going to be hard to list them all out. So, here comes our basic counting technique. What I'm going to do is find the possible outcomes for different events. So, I'm going to do it like this, and you're probably wondering why I do it like this. What I'm going to be doing, I'll show you. Let's say there's four spots, so I put one spot, two spots, three spots, and the last spot there. Now, how if I were to choose one person out of these four people to put onto the first seat, how many possible choices do I have? I can choose from any of the four people to put on the first seat, so I have four possible choices for the first seat. Now, I've picked one for that first seat, so there's three people remaining. So, for my second seat, how many choices do I have? Only the remaining three, so three left. And I've picked another one, so we have someone for the first seat, we have someone for the second seat, so how many possible ways for the second, sorry, the third seat? We have two remaining people, so it's two. And then the last person remaining must be here, so there's only one possible choice there. So those are the different vat numbers for each seat, which we'll call the event. So remember how in the count, basic counting technique that I introduced to you, we just multiply it. So you multiply four times three times two times one, and that's what I have there. Just multiply it, guys, and you should get 24 ways. So instead of having to list them all out, I could have just used that basic counting technique and multiplied it throughout. That's the idea. Makes sense, guys? So have a good look at that one. If you're not really sure how to approach a question, do what I did. Draw up little spots there and try to think about each, um, each individual spot and see how many outcomes or possible choices I have to put in that spot. Okay? And yeah, sorry about this mistake, but it happens when you do stuff like this. Okay? So it's very risky. Use the counting technique. Question four, car registration number plates consist of three alphabetic letters followed by three numeric digits. So basically, it's a number plate that has three alphabets in the beginning and three numbers at the end. And the numbers must be just single digits. Um, a, find how many different number plates are possible. So again, guys, I'm going to not do any, make sure you, no one does the guessing things, so make sure you don't try to list out all the different outcomes you could have. That's very, very, that's going to take you forever, it's going to take you days. So what I'm going to get you to do is use a smart way as what we did in the previous question. So it's going to be alphabet, 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 um, number, number, number. Okay? So, guys, how many number, I'm sorry, how many, I was going to say how many numbers in alphabet, how many letters in an alphabet? We have 26 alphabet letters, don't we? And we have 10 numeric digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, that makes 10, doesn't it? So let's first think about the alphabets that goes in the first three positions. How many alphabets can I put in the first choice? In the first, num first place there, how many possible alphabets can I choose from? Well, there's 26 alphabets, so there's 26 choices I can have. I can put any of A to Z. Now, um, let's look at the second one. Now guys, this is not about people and if, so, if we put something here, it doesn't mean I, can put the, I can't put that same one here, is it? So if I put, say, A in that one, I can also put A in that one, it doesn't really matter. So for the second position, how many possible alphabets can I put? Well, how many choices do I have? Again, there's still 26. I can put A again, even if I put it in the first one. Now that means the third one must also have 26 alphabets to choose from. Now let's look at the last three, which are numbers. How many numbers can I put in here? We have 10 numeric digits, so it must be 10. And again, if I put, say, 3 here, I can still put another 3 there, can't I? So again, we have 10 choices for the um, second letter, sorry, second number, and then again, 10 choices for the third number. And again, we've put down all the possible outcomes in each respective spot. So now all we need to do is multiply, 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 multiply. Multiply them all together. And then that calculates to something like this. You might want to use a calculator for this. And that's what you get. Makes sense, guys? So again, if you like, you can draw up little um, spots and fill them in.
one at a time. Now B, find how many different number plates are possible if repeats are not allowed. So this time, remember how I told you when we had the alphabet, 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 if I put A in the first spot, I said we can put A in the second spot again, right? Because there's no restriction. But now there is a restriction, there is a limitation. It says repeats are not allowed. So if I put A in the first one, the second one can be anything but A. Okay, and then the third one can be anything but the, what I put in the first two positions. So no repeat, repetitions are allowed. So, again, for the first alphabet, how many choices do I possibly have? The first choice, it can be any of the alphabets. So it's 26. Yeah, 26 possible choices I can have. I can just pick any of them. Now for the second one, again, I can pick any of the 26, but I can't put the same one as the first choice. So basically now I only have 25 choices left for the second alphabet. Now I've picked one alphabet there, another alphabet there, so now I only have 24 alphabets left to choose from. Now let's look at the numbers. I have 10 possible numbers, numeric digits to choose from. So the first number, it can be any of those 10, so it can be 10 choices. But the second one, it can be any number but that first one, so it must be now 9, one less. Now the last one, it can be any of the numeric digits except for the first one and the second one, so we only have eight to choose from. See how it's a bit different to the first question, A? Eh? So now again, just multiply all together, and then you should get something like this. Because no repetitions are allowed, it's definitely going to be much less than this one, where more options are available. Okay guys, so that's the counting technique. Multiply all the possible outcomes in any events.